Hey friends, welcome to Ghosh for AI. My name is Shonan Ghosh, and today I am here with more videos about machine learning. This series of 5 videos is primarily for newcomers in the field of AI and machine learning. In some of my previous videos, I have discussed about how students and professionals who have just entered in the field of machine learning tend to dive straight into very complicated algorithms, for example, say deep learning. Now personally, I think that this is a very unhealthy approach, especially in the early stages of the learning curve. To do very good work in machine learning or to create AI based products, one must have very clear concepts about some of the basic approaches in machine learning. So in these videos, I will be talking about 5 very basic machine learning techniques that many professionals find useful to deal with very modern challenges. Now these approaches may have been invented many years back, but they have survived throughout the decades because of the simplicity and their effectiveness to deal with such problems. Now before we dive into the algorithms, I would like to tell you that I really like to make videos like this about AI and machine learning. So if you want to get updates about future videos, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Without any further delay, let's jump into these algorithms that one must be aware of before going into complicated stuff like deep learning. Now in machine learning, we deal with various kinds of challenges. The first one is called classification. In classification, our job is to classify or categorize the data samples that we have into one of the predefined set of classes. For example, uh, we might be able to develop a system which automatically recognizes the digits from a postal cards. So what we have is we have some uh, pictures of the digits extracted from postal cards and we may have to categorize them into one of the 10 digit classes. So that's a typical classification example. In another work, we, we, uh, we can do something called clustering. Now, we might not always be able to know which classes the samples belong to beforehand, but still based on their features, uh, we can like uh, plot some kind of similarity among samples or dissimilarity among samples and basically group them. Now, if the features are good enough, the groups will make some logical sense and which will be relevant to solve some kind of problem. For example, in say satellite images, for example, in Google Maps, say satellite images, we have uh, various uh, regions of the map in which some of it is a road, some places are buildings, some places are trees, some are say water bodies. Now, a clustering algorithm can basically separate these different kind of uh, landforms or uh, regions based on their shapes, textures, colors, etc. Now we might not be able to say that which shape or which region belongs to which class, like whether a thing is a building or a tree, but what we can do is we can at least group the buildings together and the group the trees separately. Now this is a typical clustering example. In a bit more complicated problem, we can do something like a density estimation. In density estimation problems, what we have to do is we generally uh, kind of uh, find the uh, distribution of the data samples in some kind of feature space. Um, there can be many more problems like say in regression, uh, what we do is we basically need a, a real value output. For example, a classification algorithm can be say whether we will, so, um, in this uh, new like voice recognition system which, which we can get by say saying ok Google, uh, we can ask them things like what is the weather tomorrow or what is the, will it be hot tomorrow or will it be cold tomorrow or will it rain tomorrow. So in this kind of questions the answer is basically yes or no. So now if the question was if it will be hot or cold tomorrow, yes or no answer is very well and good. So we have a predefined set of classes say one is yes and another is no and we have to choose one of them. But in other words, if we ask about what will be the temperature tomorrow. So in that case, it's a regression problem because we have to give a real valued output uh, to the user. So this is also another one of the common challenges. Another challenge is something called a dimensionality reduction. Now we are saying something about features while talking about the classification algorithms or say clustering algorithms. Now it's not always possible to extract features manually. Sometimes the data can be too complicated or may have too many dimensions uh, to extract features. 
so we can use some automatic feature extraction techniques some of them uh, uh, is primarily designed to reduce the number of dimensions for example say a digit recognition problem can be done on a set of images which are say of size 32 pixels by 32 pixels now that is basically almost uh, over a thousand pixels in one image now thousand pixels a bit too much while dealing with machine learning algorithms but if we kind of think we don't need so many uh, number of dimensions or so many values to represent an image what we can do is we can extract some features and we can uh, define these features by hand or by our own expertise but when the data becomes more and more complicated this becomes difficult so we use something called a dimensionality reduction technique in which the this thousand dimensional data representation is reduced in a way so that we can extract the principal features from the data so these are some of the common challenges that we deal on a almost a daily basis in machine learning algorithms uh, now we will be talking about one of the most common classification algorithm which is called the k-nearest neighbor now the k-nearest neighbor algorithm is one of the simplest and yet brilliant uh, algorithms that uh, can work in many problems and say we have some pictures or some uh, animals some of them are lions and some of them are cheetahs and we want to develop an algorithm that will basically classify this animal into one of these two categories on the basis of the length of their body and their weight now if we plot the samples that we have say we have five lions and five cheetahs and if we plot them in a graph on the basis of the length of their bodies and their weights then what we will get is we can get a something like a scatter plot now if a new sample comes and we have to classify them into one of these classes just on the basis of their length and their weight what we can do is very simply we can look at which sample is closest to this sample and basically assign that class to the new sample now we can see that this uh, new sample is closest to a uh, another sample which was actually a cheetah the length and the weight of the new sample is very similar to a cheetah that we had in our uh, sample set now if we take only one uh, if we take similarity with respect to only one samples we sometimes we may be uh, we are may, maybe make, uh, making some mistakes because even if you see this data distribution by our naked eyes what we can see is most of the cheetahs have a very less uh, amount of values when it comes to weight and this specific cheetah in the middle it's some kind of it's it's a kind of outlier like its weight is abnormally too high corresponding to the average and these kind of samples are normally called outliers which generally don't follow the average trend of their class now in this case the new sample is close to this outlying uh, sample which was a cheetah so what we can do is we can compare this new sample with some more samples in the neighborhood so if we say take another um, sample in the neighborhood like the next nearest neighbor of this new sample we see now this time it's a lion so one near, near one neighbor is a cheetah the another neighbor is a lion and hence we can see we are in an ambiguous situation and so we can say that when we have two classes so just looking at two neighbors is not always a smart thing to do because uh, especially because one of the there can be ambiguous situations in where one of the near samples is of one class and the other sample is of another class so what we can do is we can take another nearest neighbor and basically the more nearest neighbor we take the better we get at our prediction the more certain prediction we can make so if we see the three nearest neighbors we see two of them are lions and one of them is a cheetah and maybe we can say that okay now i am satisfied i have seen three samples among all the 10 samples i have seen three samples and two of them are lion one of them is cheetah so i am saying going to say this new sample that we have is a lion 
and this is basically what a k-nearest neighbor algorithm does now this might look as very simple to you uh, and the codes are also not very difficult there are lots of uh, codes available in the internet which you can directly use without even have to like you, you don't need to code this say similarity measurement thing or distance measurement thing yourself there are actual functions that exist in many packages uh, that you can use directly uh, and k nearest neighbor is something that is still used in many machine learning algorithms it's one of the simplest algorithms uh, it's easy to build it's easy to deploy uh, you don't need very good hardware for this when your data size is not very big but as your number of classes increase or as your number of data samples increase this becomes a bit more difficult but we have much more optimized versions of this k nearest neighbor algorithms where maybe we uh, pre-calculate the distances between samples and also there are other versions of k nearest neighbor where we do not uh, we consider uh, not only the like which sample is uh, like what is the class of the nearest sample but rather also how far the nearest sample is uh, this distance also comes into play in some of the modified versions of the k nearest neighbor algorithms and uh, we can look for papers uh, with this title and you can find many new works uh, that you know deal with many very interesting problems in, with this algorithm so i have listed some references from where you can study more about these algorithms uh, so we have the standard wikipedia page where you can uh, know about the k nearest neighbor algorithms we have some blogs from analytics vidya uh, medium or geeks for geeks but we have apis especially from scikit-learn matlab and weka now weka uh, for newcomers, I would really suggest to look into this specific uh, software called Weka3. It's an open source software and there are lot of lots of machine learning algorithms that you can apply on your data set very easily. Uh, but still, I would say just don't apply it blindly. Know about the algorithm before you apply them. Um, and especially, I would like to gra you know, grab your attention to this demo. So we have this demo of k nearest neighbor algorithms uh, it's uh, from the stanford university and here you can basically say how many number of points you want say we want say 40 points distributed across say three classes and uh, we can choose how many neighbors we want to say if we see we are taking only one neighbors basically any new point which comes in this blue region will belong to this blue class any new uh, sample that comes into this red region will belong to the red class and so same for the green class now as we increase the number of neighbors say we increase to say two neighbors now you, you will see that we have some white regions in the bit middle now what these white regions are is basically when our uh, new sample is in this white region we have an ambiguous situation so the basically the two nearest neighbors that we have one of them belongs to one class the other of them belongs to one other class so say if you have a point in between this blue uh, blue sample and this red sample then the nearest neighbors will be one from this class another from this class so this uh, white region is basically it's uncertain so if we take three neighbors we see okay now the uncertainty has uh, gone but it's not always uh, true like say if we have four classes and if we say take three neighbors we still have a little bit of uncertain region where we have one uh, nearest neighbor from three different classes but as we uh, increase the number of uh, neighbors we can we can see that there are still uncertain regions but we can get much more uh, much better uh, say sep much better separating regions here Uh, so this is a fun uh, demo that you can play with we can increase the number of points you can choose a different kind of distance matrix so we have l2 distance matrix which is the euclidean distance and we also have l1 distance which is called the manhattan distance and uh, we you can play around with this to understand how this uh, algorithm works so you can visualize them and i hope this helps uh, in the next video i will talk about another machine learning algorithm till then goodbye Okay, so I'll be giving a link to the presentation that I'm using in the description below. If you like the video, give me a like or if you didn't like, give me a thumbs down and tell me how I can improve this video. And also tell me about what kind of things you expect from me 
or if you have any questions ask me in the comments below i will try my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge and uh, subscribe for getting more updates in the future and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications uh, see you and have a very good day and thank you for watching